Alright, hello you crazy people out there, this is Dragonite Spam, and insert obligatory remark about how I haven't uploaded anything game design related in like a month again. Anyway, uh, so today's topic is going to be getting, I guess, text input from the user, for lack of better things to call it. So, the easiest way to do that would be to use one of these fancy uh, get string or uh, one of the similar asynchronous uh, functions, and you can give them a word. That's four words actually, but whatever, and um, you can, and functionally this should do pretty much anything you ever need to do, there's no real limitations on it or anything, but it does tend to not look very good sometimes depending on what you may or may not be trying to do with your game, and there are actually other ways of getting text input from the user, if you're willing to do a little bit of programming you can make your own, I guess, uh, text input fields on the screen for the user to type into, um, so I'm going to be going and covering that. Let's see, so this basic uh, room here, or game, or whatever project, uh, I have a text object, or an object that I call text anyway. Create event, it's just got a value that contains a string that the user gives it. Uh, default is empty. Step event, right now, and excuse me if my computer's a little bit slow, I'm doing this in the background, and I've pretty much told it to, I've set Vegas priority to low in task manager, but it's still, uh, using a little bit of my CPU. Anyway, when you hit the space bar, it shows you the get string, and uh, it basically gets the string and assigns whatever you, uh, whatever you send it to value. And lastly, in the draw event, it's just going to draw this on the screen. Now, let's see, what we want to do is get rid of that, and... Alright, so there's a few ways you can go about doing this. I am just going to start this off by saying value equals keyboard string. And conveniently enough, keyboard string is a built-in variable for GameMaker. It's updated automatically in the background, and all it does is it contains the last letters pressed on the keyboard, the last uh, letters, numbers, punctuation, whatever you want. It also happens to respond to the backspace key, which is actually kind of nice. Anyway, there's a lot more to this that I'll be getting to in a minute, but for now, keyboard string, just so you can see what it does if you can't visualize it in your head already, or if you don't already know. Um, come on, compile. Alright, so it started up, and I'm just uh, I'm just going to press a bunch of random letters on the keyboard. I don't know. This. Whatever you want. It responds to, like, the space bar. It responds to uh, numbers, the number pad, punctuation. Uh, it doesn't respond to the enter key. You won't get a new line if you hit the enter key. Um, if you hit the backspace key, it will do this, which is usually what you want when you hit the backspace key. But, let's see. If you just want a way to uh, simply get some text from the user... Uh, like, what is your name? My name is Dragonite. I had to think about how to spell that for a minute. Uh, this will work. And then once you hit the enter key or um, whatever key you want, you can tell the game to stop getting input from the user and to go do something with whatever stored in value. Uh, but, and let's get out of here. If you want to do more complicated things, which is my opinion where it actually gets interesting, uh, you're going to have to do a little more work. So, let's see. First, instead of saying value equals keyboard string, we're going to say value plus equals keyboard string. And this will actually come with the issue that um, in every step of the game, in my case 30 times a second, and maybe your case 60 times a second, 120 times a second, whatever, a keyboard string will get added to the end of the variable for value. And you'll just get a nice string of like repeating letters and sequences and whatever. So if I just run this real quickly, it's going to get very weird very fast. I'm just going to hit a single key on the keyboard and it's going to do this over and over. I'm, I'm going to hit a couple keys and, and it just went completely haywire. What you're going to want to do, because you can do this also, a keyboard string is not read-only, but... You can set it to an empty string. And this way, in every step of the game, after whatever is in keyboard string gets added to the end of value, um, it will get reset and it won't keep adding the same letters over and over to infinity. And if this would really compile a little bit faster, that would be great. Alright, here it is. So, I'm just going to start typing something. And you can see, I don't know if I actually spelled that right. I can't tell if that's an L or an I, and I don't really care. But, uh, as you can see, it just added one letter at a time, and it didn't go completely haywire like last time, and that's what we want. So, this gives you a little bit more control. Um, you can do things like have the game evaluate every letter as it comes in and not just the keyboard string as a whole. But more importantly, and I'm just going to go and change one little thing over here. 
let's get rid of that. This means that you can have multiple, um, let's see, go into rooms over here. You can have multiple instances of this text box on the screen at once, and it won't get screwed up. So what I mean by that, and just adding a second one of these won't really do a whole lot of good because it'll just give you uh, two identical text fields on the screen. But let's see, I need a way to activate and deactivate each one of these, and I'm going to just... See, I should have thought of this ahead of time, but I'm going to just strap another variable on here. And active equals false, and it's, I need a way to actually activate it, so I'm just going to give it a nice uh, sprite to click on. I'm going to very creatively call it sprite. Alright, I think that little green box looks good. We're going to assign it there. And um, let's see, on the mouse click event, so when you click on it, uh, where is it left released is generally uh, when you click on it, we're going to say active equals true, and uh, let's see, first we got to disable the other ones, so. This is fairly simple, you should be able to follow this pretty easily, but this is just going to deactivate all the text fields on the screen, or rather all the text fields in the game, not necessarily on the screen, and then it's going to uh, activate the one that got clicked on. And lastly, uh, we're going to be saying if active, you could go and explicitly say if uh, active equals equals uh, equals equals true or if active equals equals one or whatever, but you really don't need to. I personally find that kind of redundant, but I have seen someone, maybe a few people, uh, ask about that in the comments before, so I guess I'd, I'll just explicitly say if active equals true, uh, we're going to do this. And also, because uh, we want this to game. No, don't open it twice, uh, because we want, or that was very strange, we want the button to actually be uh, drawn on the screen, draw self, and this will draw the sprite on the screen as well as uh, the text. Alright, so let's see, without a little bit of programming, alright, wait a minute, this is not very important, but it's driving me crazy graphically, so um, I'm just going to draw this over a little bit. That way the green box and the text aren't kind of overlapping each other. Alright, could you compile any slower? It probably could if I set Vegas as a priority to a high in task manager, but I don't really want to do that. Alright, so here it goes. Um, at first, neither of these are active. I'm typing things into the keyboard and nothing's happening. I'm going to click on this one. You can see my mouse cursor. Okay, good. I'm recording my mouse cursor. And that happened. And let's see, I can type letters here. I am typing letters here. And I can click on this one. And uh, I am also typing letters here. And I go back here. And uh, it works. Uh, you may have noticed, when I first clicked on this one, when I first activated this one, uh, this all appeared at one time, all the letters that I typed uh, before I clicked on it. and it was rather strange looking. Uh, that would be because even when I'm not actually doing anything with the keyboard string, it's still being updated in the background by GameMaker, and um, it wasn't being reset by anything, and I should probably go and, let's see, when this is activated, uh, I'm also going to say keyboard string equals empty string. I should have mentioned that before I ran the game, but Oh well, that way you get to see what it does, and I suppose what will happen if you forget to do it, and it's honestly kind of amusing. No, it isn't. I just have the sense of humor of a six-year-old. Anyway, compile! Please! Alright, so we're back here, I'm typing things, nothing happened. I'll click on, I click on this one, Steam, go away. I don't know why that popped up. Steam, go away. I click on this one, and you have letters. Click on this one, same thing. And now, you could have as many of these as you want on the screen. Um, and by the way, let's see, I'm going to uh, actually go and make a second one of these. And I'm going to make it red so that I can tell which one is active and which one isn't. Uh, let's just go and do a hue shift. That'll do it. Alright, so I just went in there, did a couple uh, image manipulating uh, lines of code. Uh, set the image speed to zero so it's not animated and flipping between red and green and giving you a headache. And when you go and click on it, 
to turn it red, it's going to set everybody's image index to zero. Um, when the text box is deactivated and the one that gets activated, image index is going to be set to one, so it shows up green. And do I still have something open? I guess I do, and yes, I do want to save it. Now, in this case, as I was, think I was saying, uh, you can add as many of these as you want to the screen at one time, and nothing will ever get confused. I don't know exactly why you're going to have so many of those, but it's an option if you do. Anyway, all right, final load, you can see they're all turned off, they're all red. I click on this one, and I'm typing into this one, and how about let's click on this one next. This one turns off, this one turns on, and uh, these all work. Now, the only thing that's missing here that I can think of is the, uh, the backspace key, and I was actually going to talk about that like five minutes ago, but I forgot. But I'm going to go back over here, and... Let's see, let's go over to the step event. Now, because keyboard string is empty over here, um, if you hit the backspace key, it can't go like a negative string or anything like that, so you're going to have to go and um, add this little feature yourself. So you're going to want to say if keyboard... So if you hit the backspace key, uh, you're going to make another change to this little value variable, and that's going to be... Uh, you're going to take off the last letter, the letter at the end, and you can do that by saying value equals uh, string copy. This is essentially the, uh, the substring method function, whatever, that you'll find in other programming languages. But the string that you're getting a copy of is value. Index, it starts at 1 because GameMaker's weird. And uh, the length, the number of characters, is going to be every character in the string except for the last one. So that's going to be string length value minus one. Now, when you run the game, if you hit the backspace key, uh, you will remove the last letter, and uh, I should say if the length is greater than zero over here, but I think GameMaker actually won't ever let you remove a character from the string that's empty anyway. Whatever, it's good programming practice to check those things anyway. So, alright, let's go and click on one of these. Hello. Now let's go and hit the backspace key, and it removes the last character. And we can go and type in it again. Um, I need to think of something to actually type that isn't random gibberish. Alright, that'll do it. And uh, once again, you can hit the backspace key. Uh, of course, this will work for any of these other text fields as well. And they will all act independently. Alright, now, what you decide to do with this is really up to you. Um, you're probably going to want to make uh, the game do something with the string if you hit the enter key or something like that. I'm not going to go that far. I'm not going to go into every single thing you can possibly do with these text fields because there's a lot of that and I'll be here until like five years from now. But this is a fairly simple bit of code. Uh, it's fairly easy to modify to do your own things. And if you are tired of using the old get string functions to get user input, text input that is, I hope you go and have some fun with this little mechanism. So, so, oh, before I go, I've been kind of bad about responding to comments on these Game Maker videos in the last two months or so, and if anybody is watching this has left a comment on one of my previous videos that I didn't answer, uh, just leave it again, and I should probably actually see it. I am going to try and get a little bit better at responding to these sort of things. Uh, August and September have been weird months. And I'm kind of trying to get my YouTube uh, schedule back on track. So, anyway, as always, this file here will be in the description of this video if you want to download it. Hopefully, if I remember, if it's not there, go and yell at me.